have you guys seen the new Celine collection? That was pretty cool, right? Um, Hedy Simane's gone through a bit of a weird phase, maybe the last five or so years, isn't it? Maybe, maybe it's to do with his latter work at Saint Laurent, or maybe it's to do with the fact that he's a bit of a dick to journalists and to people in the industry, which I quite welcome, right? I, I do sometimes think these fashion critics can have a bit of an inflated sense of self, right? They can sometimes think they're actually bigger than what they actually are, um, and the practitioners, the ones who are actually on the front line designing the thing, and putting their, you know career and reputation on the line by pointing out six collections a year and hoping that buyers buy them and customers buy them when they're in store they're the ones that really should have a voice but you know sometimes you know it's what it is if you're on the sidelines you actually got no talent to actually cut clothes you can tend to think of yourself in a maybe an exalted way just because you know exactly where you actually sit on the totem pole so hey this means old school in that regard isn't it but he's also he can be a little bit petty you know you won't write you will write one bad review about him you slight his clothes you take a piss out of his approach you say he's yeah or you say his influences are quite dated and all of a sudden you're never going to see another show again right you're out of the picture completely so i can definitely understand if you're um if you're one of these what would you say if you're one of these journalists and you do get you know blacklisted i can understand being a little bit vindictive but no one can deny the guy's absolute talent in making clothes you cannot deny that and i think this latest collection with um celine that he presented which was what spring 2021 menswear um was a, a reminder of just the levels that's out, that, that's out there at the moment and i think it's also maybe because you know you always have to mention someone like this but it's maybe a, a reminder to those people who are kind of don't really understand why some designers get stick like the virgils of the world and stuff right it's because you unfairly compare him to somebody like a Heidi Samain which probably you shouldn't do right you shouldn't really compare him to Heidi Samain because they're on two completely different levels it's sort of like you know comparing him to Raph Simmons or somebody but this collection was just beautiful um essentially I think he kind of I forgot where it was actually uh where the setting of the actual runway was but he had these models who were tiktok stars or maybe had you know i don't think they're actual tiktok stars or they were influenced by it but mainly were influenced by tiktok for sure had them walking on the racetrack um outdoors with a sick soundtrack i think from some other kid as well who he discovered on tiktok he kind of took his inspiration from there it feels like he's finally moved on from the skinny indie boy kind of scenes the thing because I, I don't think that scene exists anymore unfortunately right that that kind of formed the big part of my youth as well in the early 2000s right listening to indie bands and going to gigs and stuff and wearing my swears and my skinny jeans and that was basically hedis amen's crew that was his um that was his um pool of references or inspiration but obviously that guy is sort of like aged themselves out in terms of being attractive enough to um inspire or in terms of being uh yeah as a basis of inspiration for someone like hey man he's always kind of seeking the new right the the what's happening at, at the real ground level with the kids at the moment so that generation of per persons probably aged out they probably gained a couple of lbs they've maybe stopped touring so you need to kind of reinvent yourself and figure out what what the what is the next sort of like i don't know you call it toy boy or whatever what's the next sort of it boy scene out there at the moment and for sure you have to say it's tiktok right those wafy haired sort of like front loading no facial hair um you know chiseled jaw looking boys are the ones you know that all the girls seem to go crazy about and all the boys at those certain to at that certain age group also want to emulate so it's no surprise that um hedis main used them as a reference point and just the clothes in general like somehow he's able to mix you know eras um with kind of what's going on now at the moment and it, they don't look weird in this that's the really interesting part of this that makes it really special Sama Hades I mean, is so talented he's able to make kids who were born in what maybe the early 2000s look amazing in clothes that were basically referenced from the 80s it's absolutely incredible to see and it's so everything in here and the other thing I like about Hades I mean, too design wise in my own opinion is that every place he's been at right he's always provided people with a template of how they could um, achieve the same looks um, with a far, you know, uh, far, with, with, a, with a small budget, right? You could go out there and complete this entire look, look to the cardigan, the summer shorts, a pair of boots. You could, you could easily go and thrift that or you could maybe get that in a high street store or get that from a brand, a tier below um, Celine or any house that Heidi's, Heidi's designing. And I think that's one of the best things about him. His styling is just out of this world. And um, 
everything in here in this collection is going to be i think desirable when it finally comes out in stores it's just really magical to see like what it can be achieved when you're actually at the pinnacle of fashion really it's just all really really good i love the fact that he somehow made holes in the jeans a thing again because I've, I've kind of gone off of it um i always thought it was a little bit try not try hardy but always kind of thought it, it it not thought but it did kind of get a bit rinsed i felt as if um there was a moment where they were kind of you know they did have their moment in the sun a lot of people wearing um refurbished jeans or it's it intentionally getting their jeans distressed or buying japanese denim then it can look pretty good but then you know when you have in play Places like I don't know new look um, doing distressed jeans with holes everywhere and that you know now you have people wearing you know jeans that look like they, they haven't even been pieced together it can get a bit over the top but you know somehow he's done it in a tasteful way he's mixed it with a great outfit and it looks fresh again something now suddenly I want to wear it right you got here some great details with a trucker hat again jeans with the holes some great tailoring pieces which is always really kind of underrated not I won't say it's underrated him but most of the people kind of gravitate towards some of the bigger show pieces the hair and makeup is really solid and you know everything here you can replicate really easily but if you want to as well and you want to actually get the actual garment you can too the shapes are really great like that silhouette is great with the you know um with the hem of the trousers coming up just above the ankles to show off the white socks that pouch bag just really incredible really really nice stuff man the casting was out of this world the hair was great i think the is it Sarah Bronswell, whatever her name is or something? Is it Sarah? Whatever her name is from Bleach. I think she helped out doing the hair as well. I read on the review. So that makes a lot of sense. And just really greatly done, man. I think one of my favourite looks is coming up, I think, at the moment. It's like a poncho look. This look here, yeah. Look number 15 is definitely my favourite. So you've got this great poncho at the top here. I'm not sure what it's made of. Probably something very luxurious. Um, a great little earring, which is a great little nod to the TikTok boys, right? The idea that they have this, you know, bob, this really excessive hair at the top, and usually some sort of dangling accoutrement, right? Something a bit feminine. And they've definitely got their nails painted too, so I'm pretty sure you probably did that DL as well. And then you've got the great addition with the jeans, that this time not so much distressed, um, just with slits at the front of the heel. And then an interesting little styling tip I think he's done with all the jeans so far is that he's turned them up so they come just above the ankles and then you've got these um, trainers which I think are going to be very popular right they're sort of high top similar like a Jordan 1 with Celine on the back they're definitely going to be all over the place if definitely I'm, I'm assuming they're going to be very popular in stores uh, but that puncher look is one of my favorites and again another one as well you've got all the trousers with you know um, high hems and just great color blocking the use of patterns like this is one of the craziest looks it, this could easily be something from you know uh, a really niche japanese brand like i don't know like capital or something right you could easily see them do something like this it's just gorgeous man you've got these kind of leaf pattern on the trousers a great um what do you call that leopard print top and then the addition of a side satchel bag and silver which you know these little small things are definitely going to sell well in store you can see them getting picked up quite easily you know trainers backpacks hats bucket hats and stuff like this is you know out of this world stuff man he did really did smash it and it, and this is another real big change or maybe a, a little bit of a hint of what we'll see going forward in terms of um styling tips uh maybe uh, styling tips and trends going forward right? i don't like to say the word trends a bit gay but you know you know what i mean right styling tips in terms of what people will be comfortable to add into their wardrobe and i think this is a good addition i've always been comfortable wearing a skirt over jeans because i've got a couple of trousers from rick owens that have a kind of you know a built-in sort of skirt that goes over the top of them that looks really cool but it's it kind of you know it fits that look right it's all kind of minimalist and all black so you don't really get that many looks with it and if you layer it well with a t-shirt it can it can just look like an extension of a big t-shirt underneath but i quite like the detail on it but this is a really this is taking it a step above because you've essentially got a tartan um kilt uh, laid on top of some distressed denim and i'm not sure if the i'm sure the kilt comes separately and i'm sure not sure it's not part of the denim but even if it is the contrasting colors the contrasting patterns and the fact that it's definitely a kilt and it's got you know it's it's essentially uh tailored um on the waist it seems like and then it kind of bellows out towards the bottom so you get this really great little shape but it is it's a it's a real it's a real piece to actually try and work into your wardrobe but i actually like it i think it looks amazing especially tied in with this amazing base like you know, head head is something always makes great baseball jackets he knows to get he knows how to get that teddy boy cut really well done and again 
I'm sure stuff like woolly hats and you know zip up zip zip up hoodies and stuff like that will sell really well throughout the store. You know, in general, there's stuff you're gonna see a lot of rappers wearing and stuff, but just great styling tips stuff, stuff that you would you know generally mix up in here you know some pair of dr martin boots some taekwondo shorts similar to what pharrell did great little cardigan again with the flannel just amazing bits and pieces again these trainers are going to be so popular it's going to be insane they're going to be everywhere so definitely wear. and they're, they're much better than what he did at saint laurent before he left those sort of like faux jordans that were out there i think these look a little bit more interesting they kind of remind me of these old school uh pumas i had that were like leopard print um this a similar sort of design kind of like a kind of like a, an extension of a mid top just above the ankle with the great sock you know blue and red stripes like just really tastefully done um yeah one of my favorites easily of so far that i've seen again great styling again look at this look at the colors you know purple with the nice blues and the yellow hues and then of course great great this is you know quintessential heidi in it like being able to somehow um take what's going on in the streets with these kids and kind of put it through his own lens right do his own little twist his own little reference of it like that's an incredible look for youth in it a beanie hat dyed hair glasses the addition of a nice kind of kooky earring piece the chain you know the the really rugged chain link on there on the top great layering baseball jacket distressed denim and the high top side you just can't go wrong really man really really well done and everything he's done here absolutely incredible the whole thing and again the casting was super great um it's a shame though because obviously you know it's because i think he they signed they recently signed a really big tiktok dude didn't they celine so this is probably part of it but it's a shame that most kids you know that have the app probably you know most of the clientele that use the app anyway in general won't be able to afford this sort of fashion but i still think it's good for them to see what is actually possible and maybe just use this as a like i said a reference point in terms of what they do with their own wardrobe this is how you build it out in a really cool and interesting way there's loads of staples here that you can use you don't need to go probably maybe date yourself out a bit but i quite like like this this look is all me you know this great mo i'm not sure if it's mohair but whatever material that jumper is with some nice shorts th th that pattern on those shorts is definitely going to do bits as well when that comes out and these amazing army boots with the zip on the side like really really well done man even the styling tip with your helmet is really awesome and actually what it actually made me remind me of exactly was i think this might be um it is the main sort of like a um, this might be the collection that really takes Celine to the next level, especially menswear. And I think the same thing happened when Saint when he debuted his men's at Saint Laurent. This was maybe maybe it's up there with I don't know Fall Winter 2008 uh, Prada. That's another one of my favorites, like all time favorites. And this might be up there as well with it, just for what it did in terms of fashion going forward. I feel like this is probably maybe the most copied collection in terms of in recent history that i can imagine like every part of this collection was dissected and torn apart and done in their own version by every high street store out there you know this is the kind of reintroduction of skinny jeans really high distressed denim uh of course the zips on the knees which he obviously invent well not invented but brought to the forefront you know those jeans were absolutely everywhere the motorcycle jeans which you know margella did a few of them balenciaga did a few back in the day mugler did a few but this is what this is when we saw brands like represent all these other you know kind of um hey I mean kids come up and maybe a Miri maybe came off the back of this too maybe a Miri sort of shifted towards of you know representing this sort of kind of like dusty kind of old school not what well, yeah this sort of like dusty reverent kind of la rocker kind of um image but it's easily one of my favorites man skinny leather trousers camel obviously the the saint laurent white boots that he brought out you know they, they, just designing this alone can put, can cement your place in the fashion hall of fame you know what i mean that saint laurent wyatt went on to do absolute bits in the in the industry especially within menswear you know everyone's got a version of a cool desert boot in their wardrobe but i don't think you get any cooler than those and of course these this denim was a legendary one as well with the chain links like fucking beautiful absolutely beautiful so i think that celine collection might be as important as this going forward you might see a lot of the stuff that they've that he presented with celine kind of copied again into other brands i can imagine urban outfitters grabbing a lot of stuff they did there previously but this is easy up there one of my favorites man absolutely love this collection absolutely gorgeous everything about it one of my favorite favorite ones hands down i've got one what's my favorite looking this is the one with the red uh flannel jacket zip up sort of thing coming up here where can i find it da, da, da. but yeah this whole thing is fucking beautiful and of course the legendary teddy yeah this is it these are probably one two of my favorite looks the teddy jacket look of course the teddy jacket is everywhere now 
Um, you could probably get a couple of fake pairs from a fake version from Zara or from H&M or some other nondescript Korean brand. But that jacket is just a legendary piece. And then, of course, you've got this one at the end. This is one of my favorite looks ever. The, the, the amount of times I kind of ripped this look apart and then did it my own way is just insane. So, yeah, big up Hiddison, man, man. One of my favorite 